all right guys so another day and another reckless tweet from la china james right who at this point guys probably is one of the dumbest athletes on the planet for the life of me i i don't know how you have so much talent physical talent in a body but a brain that's so small okay LeBron James just does not want to take the L when it comes to this Makai Bryant situation, bro. Like, sometimes in life, you got to understand when you've lost, okay? D this is not another George Floyd situation. Y you, just, you just lost. Take the L, okay? Move on. And guys, I mean, these people are desperate for another George Floyd. They want another George Floyd so bad. That's why, you know, with this Andrew uh, Brown situation... Uh, we're waiting on the body cam footage. They want it to be another George Floyd so bad. And see, the media has caught on that this is not George Floyd. Like, the Mikhail Bryan situation is not that. The media knows that. That's why Dave took the L and they're not talking about it anymore. Okay? Because any reasonable person that saw what happened in that situation knows that the police were justified. So that's why they stopped talking about it. And it lets you know exactly how these people think about these situations. They see them as opportunities to make money and to push the social justice narrative. They couldn't do that with Mikhail Bryant. So they stopped. They stopped. They took the L and they moved on. Okay. But LeBron James can't do that, right? Because he made a very, very, very silly mistake by trying to dox the police officer that shot Micaiah Bryant, okay? And when he got pushed back for trying to do that, he had to delete the tweet, okay? Because he knows that it was stupid, okay? So after a few days, after a week of uh, thinking over this situation, you would think that he would come to his senses and realize that, you know what? This situation ain't worth it. And maybe even have the cojones to apologize to the officer, to apologize to the police whom he upset around the whole country. Guys, we've seen videos of police officers trying to troll LeBron. We have the police officer in LA that wants to meet with LeBron. He's not responding to any of those people, right? He's not apologizing to any of those people. But yeah, after a week of thinking, being one of the dumbest athletes on the planet, he could not. As he tweeted this last night, he said, quote, I fueled the wrong conversation about Micaiah Bryant, and I owe it to her and this movement to change it. Thank you, Fabio, I don't know his name, for educating us about Micaiah and her story and why this needs to be about her. Hashtag say her name, hashtag Black Lives Matter, and he links an article. Now, I'm going to talk about this article, okay? Because the, when I first saw this, you know, I didn't really know how to read this, okay? But he did say, protect our young black women and men afterwards, right? He, he said that afterwards. So to me, it appears that LeBron James, once again, is trying to fuel the social justice narrative. and He just doesn't want to let this go. And what confirmed that to me is what was actually written in this terrible article. Okay, this article right here might be one of the worst pieces of literature that I've ever read in my life. Okay, because it is an article of just making excuses, making excuses for people who are in the wrong, okay? And these same people like LeBron James who claim to care about black lives so much don't care about the black life that was saved because that police officer did what he had to do. But they want to write shit pieces like this in order to try to make excuses for those who are committing crimes. And it really makes us look bad it really does it's black people because it makes it seem like the only people that we actually care about are those who are committing crimes and that are cutting up okay so i'm gonna read a few paragraphs from this article because the things that they're saying here is, is absolutely insane it it is how they brainwash people into into jumping off a cliff for people like mikhail bryant who again died tragically Okay, I'm not trying to shit on her. I'm just I'm just saying she was about to stab somebody. But yet again, you have articles like this that are trying to somehow defend her. So let's read this. Why they're not saying Mikhail Bryant's name. 
After 15 seconds of police body camera footage last week, viewers of various races and political affiliations have made a decision. 16-year-old Micaiah Bryant was the aggressor, the, quote, fat, huge, knife-wielding attacker and maniac who deserved to be fatally shot by the police on April 20th in Columbus, Ohio. What about any of those statements? And again, I wouldn't personally be calling out her being fat and huge. I don't think anybody said anything about that. But knife wielding attacker and somebody that was acting like a maniac in the in the moment, yeah, that, that's pretty accurate. Yeah, um, the shooting was justified. I, I don't see what's wrong with that. It, she was the aggressor. Then it goes on to say, according to these viewers, Nicholas uh, Reardon, the police officer who immediately shot and killed Bryant, who was holding a knife, was justified. That she was a teenager in the middle of an altercation in which she presumed to be defending herself did not matter. Reardon shot uh, Bryant dead about 20 minutes before a judge announced that a jury found former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin guilty of murdering uh, George Floyd, a killing that catalyzed worldwide protests against police uh, violence. For a moment, those seeking justice for black life exhale in relief, knowing that the officer who callously took Floyd's life would be in prison. But the cries for justice that applied to George Floyd didn't ring out as loudly for Bryant. Even after it was discovered that Bryant was living in foster care, that she was in the middle of a fight with older women uh, when police arrived, and that she allegedly, allegedly the one who summoned the police for help, people, some of the same color who called for justice in Floyd's case, used police talking points to justify the four bullets that Reardon unloaded into uh, Bryant's chest. She was brandishing a knife, many pointed out, which meant the other black women needed to be protected. Crisis response expert noted, however, that de-escalation tactics like commanding Bryant to drop a weapon, physically get in between the woman, or simply communicating with her could have kept everyone alive in many recorded uh, encounters between the police and white people carrying weapons. For instance, officers uh, didn't shoot first or even reach for their guns. They successfully managed to peacefully apprehend the suspect. Now, here's the problem here. The problem with this article, right, as you can see, is that, first of all, like I told you, they're looking for another George Floyd. Th th that's what they want, right? They they want another reason to be out in the streets protesting and whining, crying about the police. They didn't get that. So they're mad because they didn't get that out of the Mikhail Bryant situation. Guys, I've literally heard people on the left literally tell people on the left, hey, guys, this ain't it. This ain't the one. L let's just wait for the next one because th this one ain't it. But apparently Vox and LeBron James, they're not, they don't want to go along with that. They don't want to let it go. So this article right here recognizes that people with common sense, like some Democrats, like uh, Val Demings, uh, the police, uh, people in the media like DJ Envy, other people who usually in a situation like this would be demonizing a police officer saw this as like, yeah, this was kind of justified. They're trying to say that, well, what crisis response experts note is that, well, the police officer could have done something else. He could have de-escalated the situation again anybody watching the video knows that that officer had 10 seconds to make a split decision he had no clue what was going on he rolled up to the scene and you had somebody get kicked in the head okay people was flying across the sidewalks all types of nonsense was going on right he had a split second decision to decide whether or not he was going to save a young girl's life but according to these people who think that crisis experts know better than police officers that, oh, well, but crisis experts say differently. They have more clout, right, and more expertise than police, okay, law enforcement experts and everybody else who has any ounce of common sense saying that, you know what, no, this is not it, right? This is a situation where it's unfortunate, but it was justified. But no, they can't have that. And they have to say, well, there are white people out there where, you know, this has never happened before. Even, you know, ignoring the fact that, again, more white people are killed by police per year than black people, right? You have situations, videos, like Daniel Shavers, okay? Daniel Shavers, who was killed by police, okay? Basically begging for his life, begging not to be shot. He got killed. Police shot him. It happens to white people too, okay? But see, that's not the narrative they want you to see. That's not the narrative they want you to see. And then they go on to say, 
Brian's death has become a debate that questions a child's actions and worthiness to live instead of another example of the racism in, of policing and institutions failure to provide wholesome support, care and safety for the communities it serves. The insistence that Reardon had no other option than to take uh, Brian's life to save others, though he risked everyone's life in the process, uh, displays the lack of consideration and the value that society places on the lives of black girls and women. Uh, again, lies. Nothing but lies. This has nothing to do with racism. Them trying to pull the race car is them deflecting from the fact that, well, one, you know, why is this child in foster care? Where is her family? Where is her mother? Okay. Why, why was she in foster care in the first place? The, the, the first person, the people that really let Makai Bryant down is her family. Those are the people that let her down first. Okay. Second of all, they're trying to deflect from the fact that, again, she was wielding a knife and about to stab somebody. They want to take all responsibility of those who are doing wrong. Okay, that's what they want to do. And again, I hate stuff like this because it makes us look crazy. And then it says, Trevor Lindsay, a professor of African-American uh, women's history at Ohio State uh, University, told Vox that there are those who won't see uh, Brian as a victim, but as someone who bought this on herself, 100% true. And even for those who do see her as a victim, they'll still victim blame, erasing the systemic oppression, including that black children are far more likely to be in foster care than that of their white counterparts. And kids in foster care are often exposed to high levels of violence that brought her to being killed at the hands of the police. Quote, people will say, I'm really sad this whole scenario happened, but had she not had that knife, that becomes the but, the qualifier, the caveat. And too often we have a caveat when it comes to defending, protecting, and caring for black girls, Lindsay said. Again, <laughs> they want to make the conversation about, well, you know, we need to be, protect our black girls. It's about the fact that she was a black girl in foster care and she was experiencing systemic oppression in an environment that is conducive to violence. And it's like, whose fault is that? Okay, that, that there's nobody else's fault except Micaiah Bryant's family's fault. But they don't talk about that in this article. They don't mention, okay, why was she in foster care in the first place? Why is she involved with this type of stuff in the first place? They don't want to talk about that. But what they want to talk about is the systemic oppression that led to this situation. When that's not what led to the situation. What led to the situation is her own decisions and her family lack of support for her that led her to being in a situation like that in the first place. But people like LeBron James know that that doesn't fit the narrative. They don't fit the narrative. So they're going to twist it now and try to make it about, well, it's about systemic racism. It's about protecting black women. That's what he tried to say. And again, it's an appeal to emotions. Okay. If I go out here and I say protect black women, what happens is that now all of a sudden black women can't disagree with that statement. That's not a statement that anybody can really disagree with. Okay. And when LeBron James says that he's playing to his emotional audience, right? What happens is that people are no longer looking at the nuance anymore. And they're just saying, well, this is just another example of state terrorism against black women. Black women are being mistreated. Everybody hate black women, anti-blackness, blah, 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 blah. Right. When in reality, that officer protected a black woman. But see, LeBron James don't care about that. He don't care about the black woman that was protected or the black life that was protected. He don't care about that because it wasn't taken by a white person. That's why. That's why. This is what it's about. It's about narrative. It's about making it seem like black people are under attack by the system and by the white boogeyman. Okay. And, 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 and anything beyond that, they don't care about, right? Like they, again, they don't care about the thousands of black murders that happen per year between black folks. They don't care about that. They care about these 250 some laws that are lost each year, right? At the hands of the cops. 90% of them, 95% of them are justified, if not more. And they want to make that out to be, be some type of tragedy and some type of symptom of systemic oppression. When in reality, it's an issue that really does not affect 99.9999999% of law-abiding citizens. And even if you are a criminal and you're, you're not law-abiding, you're still likely 
not to be affected by this in terms of being shot okay and it's funny because lebron james always wants to talk about accountability right accountability when it comes to police you won't even hold your own people accountable the people that you claim you love so much you won't even hold black people accountable when black people kill other black folks when gang violence happens you have you see you hear nothing from lebron james whatsoever he has nothing to say about that again this is a way bigger issue if we're talking about black lives here black lives that's what we're talking about but this clown wants to get on social media and continue to try to push lies in this fake narrative that this somehow had to do a race when it had nothing to do with race at all it had everything to do with the family situation and the fact that mikhail Bryant unfortunately made a bad decision but again that don't fit the narrative and he just is not smart enough to let it go let it go everybody else has let it go everybody else said you know what no this ain't it but he won't do it he can't he can't because to him every single uh shooting by the police has to do with racism they want to live in a world where police officers cannot use any type of force against black people whatsoever they want to live in a world where people are just free to commit whatever crimes they want no matter how heinous the crimes are no matter if they're trying to kill another black life or take another black life doesn't matter police should not have the right to use lethal force against a black person period that's literally what they think and this is why i've got to the point now where i'm really starting to believe that you know what maybe we should just give them what they want right take the police out of neighborhoods is that what you really want if you really don't think that police should be able to use any type of force against black people any lethal force you know what cool police should just stop responding to the calls then let people kill each other like mikhail bryant tried to do to that that young woman and just let it happen don't worry about it don't worry about it if that's what you really want but see at the end of the day people like lebron james who's a billionaire who lives in a you know a gated community with police all around him he doesn't care he doesn't care because it doesn't affect him he's making money off the narrative that all police are racist that police are just out here hunting black people in the street he's making money off of that but they're gonna hang on to every situation they can get until they get another situation like a george floyd situation and then they'll be all over that i guarantee you but they can't let this mikhail bryant situation go yet until they get another one that's literally how these people think so lebron james man i i'm sick of him i'm sick of lebron james he lord ingram telling him to shut up and dribble may have been the best advice i've ever heard anybody get him period because everything this man says is ignorant and he's the only nba player slash pro athlete that's dumb enough to try to push this narrative that mikhail bryant was somehow uh shot unjustly by the police she he's the only one doing it because he can't take the l so let me know what you guys think make sure you like comment and subscribe most importantly share a black conservative perspective peace